Hey, welcome to WorshipTutorials.com. Dot com. Helix firmware and HX Stomp version 3.0 is upon us. If you have not downloaded it yet, do it, because it's good. And in this video, Bradford and I are going to walk you through the different pitch, the new polyphonic pitch effects. Mm -hmm. Now, you heard some there in the intro. We're going to throw some playing samples throughout this video. We're going to dive, the Helix is right here. We're just going to dive into the unit. Uh, and show you HX Edit along the way so you can see what we're doing. We're not going to be able to cover all the pitch stuff that they added, but we're going to get lost for a while. Yeah, we're going to hit our favorite things. We're going to talk about what we think is great about it, which is a lot. We're going to talk about some of the drawbacks that come with it, which there are some. And uh, yeah, just give you our ideas and how we would use this on yeah. a Sunday. So before we get started, we have a patch for you. We have actually more than just a patch. Mm. We have a free download. All of the sounds that you're going to hear in this video come from this patch called the AC30 Pitch WT. And what this is is a variation of the free AC30 patch, which is available at Worship Tutorials, with also the available. pitch blocks, uh, with pitch block put in the first row. So we'll talk about this later in the video, but we you're going to have to rearrange your patches to use these effects. We've done it for you. You can download it, link below. It includes a free premium impulse response uh, that we have made here at Worship Tutorials of my AC30, which is right over there with Celestian Blues. Sounds great. You also get one of the, my personal favorite feature in 3.0 is the favorites feature. Yes. We are giving you a collection of our favorite favorites. Is that how you would say it, Bradford? Basically what we've That's done. That's not how I would say it. So that check out the, a way to say that it. is a way to say it. <laughs> check out the video that will be on the channel about what favorites are and how you can use them. Essentially, what this is, it's a collection of effects with our settings that we love. You're gonna get a compressed compression, overdrive, like drive effects, reverbs, delays, mods, and a whole slew of pitch effects. So we're gonna have our favorite settings of these new pitch effects in that favorites download. Pull them into your helix, and you can just put them in whatever patch that yeah. you want. Available, 100% free, grab it, link below. And one more thing before we really jump into this video, this is gonna be a longer one. There's a lot to talk about here and we're demonstrating things along the way, we're talking about parameters and how you use these things. There are timestamps below here on YouTube or if you're on YouTube, you, you'll just see them across the bot, across down here. Uh, you can just kind of click to whatever part of the video you are interested in. So first I think we should probably talk about, how did I magically get this guitar in my hands? Video editing. Yes, that's it. <laughs> Let's talk about what poly pitch is and why is it such a big deal. So this is poly, polyphonic pitch is something that I think Helix users have been waiting for literally for years. There's a reason why poly pitch was not originally in there. Well, we don't know the reason, yeah. but it's a tough nut to crack. It really is. Because yeah. what it means, it's multiple notes are Polyphonic, tracking. Polyphonic, yes, means multiple. Yes. Uh -huh. So it means multiple notes are tracking at one time. So when we say polyphonic, we mean poly meaning more than one. So there's two ways you can do a pitch effect. You can do a monophonic, meaning it's one note, it tracks one note. So all of the, f the pitch effects in Helix prior to 3.0 are monophonic. Meaning if you play more than one note with that on, it sort of falls apart. It doesn't sound very good. Polyphonic meaning you can play like full chords and it will pitch all of it up and down and sound good. Yeah. It doesn't fall apart. And polyphonic is a lot harder to do. I want to just quickly show you what it sounds like. We've got the effect block. It, it's named something different. You can see it in HX Edit. Uh, but this is just poly pitch. That's what mm -hmm. it's called. And it sounds like this. So what that effect is doing and what you get with the poly pitch is you can move it in one direction. Minus 24 to plus 24. So you heard a plus 12. So you heard my guitar, the dry signal, plus the octave up from the pitch effect. And it played all the notes together. And then you can see there in HX Edit, we have it set at 66%. So if you set it at 50%, you're gonna hear exactly the same amount of your dry guitar and the octave up. Mm -hmm. All right, so that is in a nutshell what it does, but I think 
what we can do is go through these different effects and explain like what all the parameters do. Yeah. Because I think this is going to be confusing for people. Yeah. At, at face value, if you're like not really wanting to experiment, just know this can give you octave down, octave up, two octaves up, two octaves down. Yeah. And point of clarity, you said 12, 24. Yes. It, there are 12 notes that exist. Oh, we need a little bit of theory. In the scale. Yes. Or, or across music, there are 12 notes. Um, and so by each one, you're going up chromatically. So yeah. if you're trying to add an octave or down an octave, you do plus 12 minus 12. If you're trying to do two, it's plus 24 minus 24. Yeah. Anything in between is going to... It's going to generate uh, potential you, harmonies. You can you can do that if you want to. Yes. But you may summon <laughs> demons if you bring up the there wrong There are people who of, have thought that throughout yeah. history, yes. <laughs> you play the right chord. Yes. So let's go through what each of these parameters do. You can see it in HX Edit. The first one you see is intervals. That's what Bradford was talking about. How much are you pitching up and down? So uh, zero would be the note you're playing. If you go plus one, it's like fretting one fret up. Yeah. All the way to 12 would be... One yeah, for guitar players, mm -hmm. we could consider that think of it as, as how many frets up do you want to go. Or down. Yes, yeah. or down. Yeah. And so that's your interval. Sense is then sort of a micro pitch. Yeah. So you can use sense plus up, uh, you know, plus or minus to get more of a, almost like a, you could... You can kind of get like a chorusy type of effect, but you can also use it to add like the uh, the effect of like a, a little bit more space. If you go like plus five or plus seven cents, it's not the same as steps. It's kind of like between the steps. Yeah. So it's just like a micro pitch. We leave that at zero often. Yeah. Uh, the next thing you get are these uh, shift time curve return time return curve. One thing that this pitch effect will do, and I will demonstrate it. This is when it gets crazy. This if is you're fun. not interested in crazy noises, just drop down in the description. Look you at the look at the table of contents and, and contents and skip ahead. Yes. This is where it gets fun and quirky. You should be. So you can make this pitch ramp up and ramp down uh, in time or set, you know, in tempo or set to a specific time. Can so I stop right there? I'm putting my tempo in, yes. I feel like this is important because you just said a buzzword for me. What? You said ramp. ramp. Yes. This is very, very, if you follow us, if you understand my love of tremolo, more specifically the Chase Bliss Gravitas. Mm. It ramps. It, yes. I have it set to ramp the speed of the tremolo. Mm -hmm. This is an important note. Just want to make sure there's clarity here. I, this ramping yeah. is only specific to this exact effect. Yeah, you can't do it with other stuff. I get. We get asked often... Can we do that in the Helix? Mm -hmm. And I wish. We've and asked I, the developers. I've requested. They said no. They said it's just it, there's there's certain elements that have to be added for them to do it in the and to yeah. keep the so ramping in this case is only able to be done within yes. this pitch effect. It is a parameter within this pitch effect. Yes. Here we go. This is what it sounds like. I'm gonna put some uh, reverb and delay on just to accentuate the effect. Mm. Right here we go. <laughs> So cool. It I love cool. it. That is awesome. Okay, so. You probably the, wouldn't want to do that in a very dense mix because someone's going to look at you like you hit a wrong note. What'd you do? Yeah. Yes. But these four parameters that talk about shift time and shift curve determine how long it takes to ramp and how it actually ramps. So first thing is shift time. You can set that to a millisecond value or you can set it to a tempo value. In this case, I set it to a quarter note, so one beat. It's going to ramp from where from your starting point to wherever you set, in this case plus 12, in one beat. You can make that take a whole measure, so it's a super slow yeah. ramp, which can be really cool depending on the effect that you want. Uh, and then the same for downtime, so you can make it go up slower or faster than down, or That's the so same. Cool. So the next set of parameters are the curve. So when it ramps, we set it to start slow 2. So that means it's going to start slow and... Rather than a linear how's that, curve, how's that, Brian? Whoop, it's beautiful. a logarithmic shape of a curve. I was, I was about to ask if you could give us a science, of a curve, right? a science term. If it, if you set it to linear, it's just going to whoop instead of whoop. There's difference, right? So there are two or it's there. So you can tell it to start slow or start fast, and there are five different uh, options. 
for each. Start slow, one, two, three, four, five. Start fast, one, two, three, four, five. And so those parameters will give you the ramp up and down. Now, if you don't want it to ramp, it's very simple. What you do is you go to the, the shift time and you take it off of the BP of the tempo value so that it's a millisecond value, set it to zero. And it won't ramp at all. It just turns on and turns off. So it just off. turns on. So it's basically an effect like yeah. just you want it to turn so, on when you turn it on. Yeah, so you can use this effect to ramp or not to ramp. So the next parameter is tracking, and that will determine how close or how stable the tracking is. So you can set it from fast to stable. So when you set it to fast, you will experience less lag or less latency. And we experienced a little bit because we, we have it currently set in this patch to X stable. So that's the most stable tracking. So that's gonna make sure that when you play a full chord, it's gonna really sound right. The, the pitch tracking is on point, but you might experience a little bit of lag with that. And if that bothers you, pull it back. So you kinda of wanna find this medium between how fast is it tracking to how stable is it tracking. We're talking about milliseconds, but you're gonna yeah. be able to, you're gonna feel it. You Like mm -hmm. it's really bizarre when you, you play and you feel that it's like, I mean, you can, it not, it's not as immediate. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, the next thing you get is an auto EQ. Now, uh, this was, an, I didn't have any idea what this did initially. So, uh, after doing some research about it, what I found is that when it generates an up octave, especially if it goes way up, like 24 or down, it, uh, the up octave can be pretty harsh yeah. and the down octave can be really muddy. Which kind of makes sense. Yeah. And so the auto EQ is like a compensation. So if you're generating up octaves, as you turn the auto EQ up, it will warm the up octave. It doesn't do anything to your dry tone. It sort of compensates for the harshness in the up octave. And if you generate down, it's going to brighten the down octave. So it does something different depending on what you're doing. Uh, and so we have it set to a little above five, and I felt like that was a pretty good happy medium. If you turn it all the way up, if you're going up, it makes it pretty dark. Yeah. Turn it all the way down, it's pretty bright and harsh. So somewhere in the middle felt good for us. So if you're a POG user, or you were at one point, I would say this is very reminiscent of like the filter control, which mm -hmm. same kind of effect. It was to kind of... It's an EQ compensation. Yeah, it was because, yeah, I mean, you may like it though, that real bright sound you get with an upper octave yeah. can sound really crisp and like if you like it you know that's totally cool yeah okay so the next thing is mix and that's just how much of the generated pitch is in your signal and then level is the overall level of the uh the effect so mix is only going to affect the generated signal uh level is both your dry signal and the yeah. generated signal so you could in theory you could use this for like a, a lead sound like if you mm -hmm. wanted to throw octave on a solo and you could use the level if you put it before drives uh which actually would be a good thing to probably do yes, so it push. tracks better we do that with the dual pitch a lot. yeah but if you put it first and you use the level um then you could use it to push the drives and the amp a little bit and you get one yeah. button just a thing you yes, could, you could, you, use that you could try that. that option is right. available So that's the poly pitch, what the parameters do, what it sounds like, how you can use it to be creative. Uh, one, well, really quick before we move on, where would you put this in your signal chain? Where do you put a poly sort of pitch effect like this? I would recommend it being first. You want it to yeah. have the purest signal. Yeah. That we want to receive the purest signal. If you start putting after drive, um, if you use drive and and you want to use the octave at the same time, like for a lead, for a lead, type of a thing. here's the thing: it's an interesting kind of dynamic. It'll be a little more prominent if you put it after the drive, okay. but your octave sound 
will not be as pure. And so it's like this, it's, a, it, it's interesting. Like okay. your octave won't be as defined, mm -hmm. but like the overall sound will be more defined because you're throwing the octave after the drive. Yeah. And so you're like octaving the drive too. Mm. Just, yes. Is that it? Can we just turn octave into a verb? We're octaving. You just pitching, pitching the the drive. Yes. So if you put it first, a little bit experiment. There's different right. sounds you'll get, but like it's real easy on the helix. You just like hover over right. it, hit action, and you just move it, and it actually scoots everything or over for you. you just, yeah. Well, there's that too, but it just scoots it over yep. everything over for you. So a little more pronounced, but not as a little more intense of a sound but not quite as defined of the octave if it's after drives. Yes. If it's before drives, it's going to be a little more pristine and perfect octave mm -hmm. sounding, but it's not going to be as defined, no matter what the mix is. Like, you it's, you can't compensate. It's interesting. Just yeah. pick what you like. So the next thing that they've put in here is they call it the poly wham or the poly, poly like the Digitech poly whammy. whammy. And what this is is like a Digitech whammy pedal where you control the pitch with the expression pedal. So we have it here. We have this set to... Uh, plus 12 just to show you what it does. I'm gonna play a full chord and Bradford has control of the uh, the effect. And it's gonna sound like this, ready? Okay, so as you heard, as Bradford, well, I don't know if you could see his foot, but his foot went like this and as he did it, it went into the plus 12 and then came back down. So, uh, I brought my foot back down. If you know the song Glory to Glory by Bethel, it goes dun 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 That's a Digitech whammy. And you actually have, or you had. I had. Uh, I had actual, I had Pope's, Pope's actual whammy actual that he recorded. Actual whammy Yeah. And he wrote his name on the bottom. Yeah, but I was like, I don't, yeah. You don't have it anymore. I don't have it anymore, but. Yeah, so that is what this does. Now, the whammy was in uh, Helix prior to Firmware 3, but it was monophonic. And so was so the original, could, actually. The original Digitech whammy. Digi Digi they released mono? four. Okay. Digi the uh, whammy four was polyphonic. Okay. But there was still a mode to switch to back, back to, to the original because people... It sounded like, they knew They knew people would want the original sound because it has this yeah. charm. Yes. So if you want the charm, use the older whammy so, in the Helix. So if you're familiar with the whammy effect in the Helix, uh, the poly version works pretty much the same way except now you can play more than one note at the same time and it tracks. And so, to just to go through the controls, you have the, pos uh, the position is, and Bradford is moving his foot up and down with expression one. The position is the uh, expression pedal. You can assign that to other things if you want. It doesn't have to be the expression pedal. The heel shift is the pitch shift that you get when your pedal is in the heel down or the, the off position. So you can set this thing to go from minus 24 all the way to plus 24 Nuts. if you want to. Uh, right now, what we have set is the heel position at zero, so when the pedal comes back, it's like just your dry signal. Yeah. Uh, the toe position is the same thing. What is the, the effect doing when you pedal down? Uh, tracking is the same thing. Uh, how stable is it versus how fast is it? Yeah. You'll notice that we like X stable, just because I don't feel like there's lag or... It's, it's the least effects. amount of lag with the best amount of tracking. Yeah. Um, auto EQ works the same way. It's compensating for when you're going up or down in pitch just to kind of keep that tone uniform. And then mix is how much of it do you want? So a lot of times, let's just demonstrate, a lot of times you'll have this set for mix at 100%. So you're, you're, you don't hear any dry signal. So it's taking the whole signal and moving it up and down, which is a cool effect. But it's cool too to have your dry signal on top of it as the other one ramps up or down. So this is 100%. I'm just gonna play that chord again and Brad's gonna pitch it up. So that is how the poly whammy, or the poly wham works. Um, now one thing I wanna show you is that you can use this to sort of generate harmonies. You can use the other one to generate harmonies too, but it's cool to to like pedal into them. So in this instance of it, we have it set for the toe shift to go plus five. So it's gonna basically create a harmony and the mix is set at 70%. So you're gonna hear uh, the dry signal underneath and as Brad, toe, you know, expression pedals up, you'll hear this harmony.
that's a cool effect. If you know specific harmonies that you want to play, you can go plus five, plus seven, plus three, or minus. Uh, you can kind of create like almost like chords, like two, yeah. two note voice. It kind of reminds me of something like a really bizarre pedal steel kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. On a pedal steel, you'll you'll use like the slide or whatever. I don't even know the bar. Like a like drone, kind of note. pull one note. Yeah, out. It's crazy. Yeah, you can get that kind of an effect. If with you're it. gonna use this on a Sunday and you're gonna do something like that, I want to hear it. Yeah, and plan ahead, please. Yeah, don't just, don't <laughs> you don't fly by the seat of your pants with a plus five whammy <laughs> setting. All right, <laughs> put that on a t-shirt. So the next one that I know a lot of people were also really anticipating this is called the poly capo effect, and this is a basically a D. It's not really detuned because detune is a different thing, but it pitches everything down or up by certain uh, steps or intervals. And so this is what you would use if you know you had a song scheduled in the key of A and you learned everything. And then the worship leader shows up and said, we're gonna do it in G today, instead of A. Good luck. And you can just say, oh, no problem. I'll just throw my poly capo effect in with a minus two. So, I've seen people ask this. Yes. This would be what you would use if you were a fan of the Digitech drop. Okay, cool. I like the sound of baritone guitars. I you also have guitar. I have a baritone. I also like playing my guitars. Like I'll tune it down if it fits. Like I want to play playing something in the key of like in a different key. I'm mm -hmm. thinking right now. I want to play in the key of E on yeah. my guitar. But like so you can do that. You can drop it. You can tune it up. It's a like digital. If your capo. song is playing. In, if you're playing a song in F and you want to play E voicings, yeah. you can use this. Yeah, you can exactly. So let's go through the parameters really quick. You kind of get the same stuff. The interval is how much it's pitching everything up or down. You can go minus 12 to plus 12, so a full octave down to a full octave up. The tracking is the same thing, how stable versus how fast. The auto EQ is the same thing, it's that EQ compensation. The mix lets you mix the effect in. Now if you're using this to pitch all your signal down or up, Maybe a little weird. you would only want to use 100%, but you can mix your dry signal in if you want to use it for that kind of a creative effect. And again, level is the overall output of the effect block. Uh, so we have it set here to minus two. Uh, let's, first of all, I'm going to play without it on and then with it on and show you how it sounds. Let me do this with a bar chord. I'm going to play an A bar chord. I'm going to hit the poly capo to make it a G chord. Then I'm going to play a G bar chord. I need to play the right chord. So you can... A B the difference of playing just this chord. Oh, too many letters. Versus this with the A chord, G chord, okay. then A B anyway, the A this, chord here, with the G chord. It's gonna make more sense <laughs> right now. Here we go. So this is an A. So here's the here's the takeaway. It sounds pretty good. It's not bad. It is weird to hear the open strings. Yes. In one key, and then it's like yeah. playing it back in a different. You're playing in with a band or with yeah. in ears or headphones. You may not yeah. notice, but so, it's really bizarre. It is. It sounds pretty good. It doesn't sound as good as playing that, but it sounds pretty. Like if you didn't know how to play a song, if you had a song scheduled in A, and you learned it, and they changed it to G at the last minute. And you didn't know how to play it, which this could if get you, you by now. Do not know. You should learn <laughs> that that I am a big proponent of learning everything. Learning in shapes, shapes, yes, yes. But anyways, I could also see this as you don't like you're doing a song in a flat key. Yeah, and like, yes, a flat like a minus one or plus. Three yeah, or, and like well, if you're doing plus, I say just put the capo on the guitar. Yeah, if you're gonna do plus, but it depends on what you're going for. Yeah, playing a song in a flat key, sharp key, whatever. I don't care who you are, like, it's just not as good playing bar chords. Yeah. Like, nobody, I've never no. heard a single person play a bar chord where I was especially, like, and that sounds better than an open chord. And especially if you're using open strings yeah. in a song, that have yeah. parts that use open strings, this can save you. Yeah. Uh, so, so it has nothing to do with, like, a last minute change even. Like, it you just, yeah. like, and we're, I, I think this brings up a point. We gotta do a video yeah. with the baritone. And okay. I'm gonna talk about why well, how I use a baritone. Let's replicate a baritone. Oh. See how it sounds. So let's baritone is that. minus five, right? Baritone. So we've set this thing up for minus five. So that's what playing a baritone would be. So I'm just gonna play a part and then you turn it on and see how it sounds. So here we go.
Let me play a chord. That was actually pretty cool. Oh, it's like yeah. a change. It sounded. It sounded right. Yeah, it sounded pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I, here's my takeaway. I would just use my baritone. It's cool, like for if you're like if you're producing a song. Yeah, you would use your baritone, but oh, not everyone has baritone. one. I don't know. Yeah, oh, that's just, uh, if I'm you're, well aware. If you're producing a song and you want that sound like as an auxiliary part, not as the main part. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. This will totally get it. Yeah. Like, and it will sound cool to me. To me, it sounds better playing the single note stuff, which yeah. I heard. I hope you caught that just now. Yeah. The the chords, it tracks fine. It sounds fine. It just doesn't sound as good. Yeah you know, as the single note stuff. But it's kind of impressive. We found in playing with this that going down to like minus three, like if I were gonna use it for a full song to play parts with, minus three is about as far as I would go. Because minus four starts to sound weird at that point. I would learn the song in a new key. Okay, so there's also this 12 string effect, and that is designed- Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man. <laughs> it's designed to make your six string guitar sound like a 12 string guitar. Play a song for me. We'll just demonstrate here. Sounds so like this, the 70s. What this, what this effect is trying to do is trying to like, generate those those notes that you get on a 12 string guitar because there's like notes in between all the the normal six string notes 12 and above. strings are a pain in the butt the two <laughs> yeah yeah they're they're uh, they have a cool sound i my takeaway with this is that it kind of gives you that vibe right <laughs> Take it from your facial expressions, you're not into that. I'm not, the sound of a 12 string just gives me It's just chills. not for you, right? It's just like, I, all I can think about is like, Rickenbackers, Rickenbockers, whatever. Yeah, yeah. The, the, what are they, the, cool. bir the birds? Are they the ones that do Mr. Tambourine Man? I don't know. Uh, and then like, some Beatles or whatever, I don't know. Just, you hear it, you hear it really more on acoustic, but there are a lot of yeah. 12 string. You know, you wanna know something interesting? The Mysterious Ways intro. That's right. It is on a 12 string. It's played on a 12 string. And the 12 string itself, the way that it sounds and the way that it inputs, I was watching a video at Rig Rundown from the Edge the other day. It like engages the auto filter thing that gets that sound. So he's not actually doing anything. It's just his guitar is. It's the, and it's a 12 string. Going into some weird effect. I don't know what I, it is. I forgot that's what that was. Be creative, people. That's the, that's the point. That's here. the point here. Yeah, so I think. Again, with the 12 string effect, I feel it's the same uh, type of a thing like if you're gonna replicate a baritone. If you want a, that sound in a mix and you don't have a 12 string, and it's not like the prominent sound, it's not like the, the featured thing instrumentally, I think it really gets that, that vibe, especially if it's kind of tucked away in a mix to add a texture. Yeah. I think it works really well. And then the controls on there are the blend, and that's how much of that uh, poly effect you want. The bass and treble is pretty self-explanatory. How bright or dark is it? And then again, the overall level of the uh, the effect. All right, so those are all the new poly pitch effects, Bradford. But like a good Apple keynote, there's one more thing. Just one more thing. <laughs> and this, this See, is I don't something. even know you were gonna go that way, and so I thought that was even funny. <laughs> but when I said it, you knew exactly. I knew exactly. It, it's, they do it every time. This is the it iPhone. gets me. <laughs> it gets me. So. There's an effect. I know you're a huge fan of it. Ah, yes. This thing is basically turned into, it's like they were reading my mind. Mm. All these toys and pedals. It, this, isn't a, this isn't a shameless plug to go follow my Instagram. All I'm so, using is as, as, an, as an example. Link below. B in Mitchell. Is that right? There's a B Mitchell music. B in Mitchell. B in Mitchell. Yes. My, my Instagram typically is me. You see the pictures of my kid, food, coffee, raw denim guitars or crazy pedals yes that's rapper in a nutshell i love pedals that can sound great like overdrives modulations delay reverbs i love that stuff but what i get real excited about is when there's a pedal where like i can play a note and like it just like does its own thing mm -hmm. now i love playing guitar i do not want to stop playing guitar but this whole update we're just going to focus on one thing here yeah is the this is the poly sustain this whole update they like dropped like Several fun, glitchy, noise making. We're not even talking things. about the glitch delay. Which yeah, is there's awesome. a glitch delay. We'll come to that later. But and there's like continue. a, a scrambled phrase sampler. I said there's one more thing, and we've talked for a while without saying what it is. So the the one thing is the poly sustain. Ooh, it is a pit. It is a poly pitch effect. 
But it is not under the pitch. They, it's effects. classified as a delay, which I guess it could be either one, really. So really what well, I've seen a lot of people say, what can you do in the Helix to replicate an electroharmonics freeze? Freeze. Or the alter ego. Yep. Yes. This is it. And it sounds awesome. So you heard it. It is a glorious thing. It basically lets you use... It is mega simple, though. It like, really is. Like, don't it's, overthink it. It's not as hard as you think. Yeah. It lets you use the Helix to basically make a pad. Uh, so how it works is, it's under the delays. It's only under the mono delays, because all the poly pitch effects are only mono. They're not stereo. Yeah. Um, that would take all the DSP. But this is <laughs> this is fine. You don't need it yeah. to be... So um, what it does is, is you play anything... And you hit the button, and it grabs it and just for that like sustains that it. frame that sample of time. Yeah, and then you have some controls. So you heard Bradford using it. Uh, so let's just go through the controls real real quick. The interval. Now this is a pitch effect, and we're going to demonstrate what you can do with it in different pitch effects. So you can go minus twenty four, so down two octaves all the way to up two octaves with it, which is really cool. And everything in between. Yes. Um, the attack and the decay are how long it's like a basically a swell in and a swell out of the uh, of the effect so when you're engaging it or bypassing it. yeah so when you engage it it kind of you know depending on what you're playing and then when you let it go it decays off so you can set that based on milliseconds uh, the mod frequency is how much modulation you're basically hearing or the, and the mod depth so the frequency and the depth control the level of modulation so the effects level is sort of the level of the the hold mm -hmm. that you get. You don't want it to be too, too hot because typically, like you heard me doing, it's to sit underneath your playing and kind of give you like this like mm -hmm. bass layer. So, if, I mean, you can do whatever you want, but yeah. my suggestion would be to keep it quite low because it's real nice like you're playing and you stop for a second. It's just there. And it's just there. Yeah. And it, it's, it's nice. You don't want it to be too up in your face because well, then it gets busy. And if you're playing too, like if you're using this just on your own or as a, in a performance type of situation, you can just bend down and control that and bring it up and down depending on what you, you need. You can probably assign it to an expression. Oh, you totally too. can. So yeah. you can control it. You can control you it. You can like make a, a button, turn it up and down, or you can go. expression pedal it. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got these random depth and speed, and that's just going to like add some randomness, almost like a humanized effect to it so it's not totally uniform if it be straightforward and that that is one thing with using like the freeze mm -hmm. the freeze just grabs and it's just there i think it it's doesn't like it one doesn't knob. move at all yeah i think it's like just one thing one i knob. love about this is it feel there's a little bit of motion to it especially yeah. when you add some modulation. it's not sterile yes and and then the level is the overall level of the effect so that will affect your dry tone it will as well yep. uh okay so this is with the zero on you already heard bradford demonstrate it but i'm just going to show you how this sort of works. And you heard there how it decays when you disengage it. Uh, now the other thing too is we have this in front of our reverbs and delays so it's going to be reverberated and delayed. Yep. Is that the right terminology? Yeah. And so you will get a little bit of a decay that way as well. Uh, so you really need to think about where you place this in your signal chain. We'll talk about that in just a bit. But let's demonstrate what you can do with an octave up or down type of a situation. Okay, so in this situation, I have it set to an octave up. We'll play that same chord.
That's cool. It gives you like a shimmery yeah. type of effect. Exactly really what kind of what you're doing with this is creating pads. Yeah. Is what you're doing. Okay, so octave down sounds like this. So just playing with that effect sustain parameter or effect level, like it would be really cool to assign that to an express. Like if you had another external expression, it'd be cool to assign that. Um, you could essentially just grab a chord and then play something in that key at any point, turn yeah. it on. Yeah. And if you play the right voicings, like if you know, just if you play like a one and a five, you can basically play a pad that you can use through a whole song. You can change chords underneath that yeah um and that can be really cool so the poly sustain this is one of the most inspiring fun effects in all of the helix and in my opinion it's now i'm not trying to negate the work that went into it yeah. but execution wise yeah for a, uh, a player for a user live in the moment it's mega easy to do you almost yes, when really you pull is. it up when you pull it up the knobs i think it's just Adjust it. Even if you don't set the attack and decay, just like you just pull Leave it up and start using it. Values, they yeah. sound pretty good. Yeah. You just hit it. Make sure you hit the chord first, and you hit it. It's all. It's it's not quite like if you're a keyboard player. It's not sustained in that regard. It doesn't build on top of each other. It just yeah, grabs yeah. it. What the you play second. after doesn't, right. doesn't build on. It top. doesn't. Um, so like you know maybe if you're a big sky user, a big sky user, you can set it to hold or freeze. Mm -hmm. And so hold, uh, it'll just uh, keep. Oh, I'm confused. Actually, I can't remember. One of them, it keeps building and it gets nuts. So and that's crazy. like a that's like sustain. an actual sustain. Yeah. The other one, it just grabs. I'm pretty sure hold is just, like sustain. Yeah. So this this is great because you can put it anywhere in your chain. And I would say, after we were experimenting, we agreed. But I knew this kind of going in. This would be what I would want dead last in both my dry effects. So let's talk about where to put it in your chain. Yeah. Because this one you really have to have some consideration. You well, have they to all do. think about what you're trying to do because I would want this right before all my wet effects for mm -hmm. a couple reasons. First off, in this instance, this is a, a mono effect. Mm -hmm. and so if you want to use stereo effects, you can't put this after stereo effects. It will sum whatever's It'll end up summing it to mono. Mm -hmm. So you don't want that. Um, but I would put this after drives at least um, yes. because it will capture the sound of like the overdriven guitar. That's what well, you want. Well, what it's outputting will get affected by what's after it. Yeah. So if there's a drive after it and you turn that on, it will overdrive the whole. Yes. Yes. And it, what it'll end up holding is anything that's in front of it. It'll yes. hold anything that's in front of it and then anything after it will be added will to. Yeah. So I think uh, where you see it in this patch after all of the all of the gain type of effects and in front of all of the wet or modulation effects too. So Helix 3.0 has has potentially replaced a handful of, of your well, quirky stuff. Well, potentially. It has it could. risen it up could. to. Ah, yes. Okay. So for me, I use the Red Panda Tensor to mm -hmm. hold. It does some other things. The hologram, microcosm, the hologram, Infinite Jets both have hold functions that I use. They do some different other things. You can manipulate the sound and all. But, um, and right now I'm blanking. On the Infinite what Jets is cool. Oh, yeah. The, I remember when you got that, you played some stuff, and it was like, whoa. The microcosm's a whole other level. I use the, uh, the Empress Zoya to do some hold stuff, too. Mm -hmm. At its core, this is a little different, but overall, it's like... This gives you some of that cool, quirky. It's, it's so cool. It's so and, good. And what I what I love about it is we kind of transitioned into like let's just kind of continue talking about what we really love about these new poly pitch effects, and we can talk about some of the drawbacks. Yeah. So what I love about them is they're they're really easy to use, in my opinion. Once you yeah. understand the parameters, the parameters can be confusing at first, like especially with that poly pitch, like the rise time, the fall time. X stable versus X fast. What does that mean? What is the EQ? Once you get around that, they do have a readme. As yes. do most software that's how developers. I mm -hmm. Most people.
people who you buy stuff from include yes. readmes yes. like this patch that we are giving away. Yes. We'll talk about that later. But there's a readme. Yeah, so um, I find them very easy to use and set up and to get creative really fast. Like the first time I, well, like, like when I first understood that rise and fall ramp stuff in the poly, I set it up and I played something and I hit the button in time and it went whoop, in time. It was like, this is cool. Mm. Like this is super musical and inspiring. So the effects sound really good. I would, I would say they sound really smooth. Like, that's a character. Like, really, yeah. like, very polished sounding. Uh, some people might interpret that as lacking character. I would say if there's any drawback as far as the sound goes, and we'll talk about drawbacks, that might be one. But I think that they sound really, uh, really smooth, really polished. Uh, the polyphonic-ness of them works very well. Especially yeah. when you're in the X-stable yeah. settings. And I haven't really run into... You can run into latency stuff. Uh, but it hasn't been a problem. Um, so yeah, for me, it's the musicality of it and the ease of use and it, in what that creates then is a very inspiring set of effects to use. Yeah. Like I feel like I got like three or four new pedals that are really fun to use with it for free with this firmware update. Yeah. So for me, I mean, it's basically the same, uh, you know, just, it, it sounds, it sounds good and I, I just... I've had fun making new noises. It mm -hmm. may not be super practical for, for me to use live. Yeah. But, you know, you learn things just messing around practicing and creating mm -hmm. new sounds and messing with new toys and you get inspired that way. Yeah. And, you know, that's that's healthy, I think. I think overall the, you know, just overall 3.0, mm -hmm. I think the poly sustain is like my favorite thing. I, I would agree. But... I mean, especially that, for what we've just covered. And the poly sustain too is a really good practice tool. Yeah. Because you can create like that pad. Yeah. And then play on top of it. Yeah. I would fake it with a looper. I mm -hmm. would do that. You can, yeah. Yeah, you just turn it on and off kind of really quick. Swell but into it. But it 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 doesn't sound the it same. It has that cyclical thing. Yeah, it's just, it's not the same. But I used to do that anyways. Just mm -hmm. and if you if you would do it just right, you could get it. I would like turn it on, and. Stop it pretty quickly, but then overlap the loop again. Yeah. So like, it would cover the initial attack a little bit, but yes. still, it wasn't quite the same. So I was doing stuff like this, like, and they put in the button. Okay, so let's talk about cons, drawbacks. The first and the biggest one is these things take a ton of processing power, yeah. DSP. I think Line 6 has said they take a quarter of the DSP processing in the whole Helix. Yeah. And the only reason we're really talking about cons is because, like, this is kind of a big deal mm -hmm. for us, yeah, praise and worship guitarists, because we already, you know, like, if you get any of our patches, our DSP is like pretty we much max maxed. So a lot of people have asked, are when are you and when are you going to add push updates for your patches that add the new goodies from three point And the answer is we we won't be because these pitch effects are what we would put in there. Yeah. But we can't because they take too much DSP. So you can't, if you have an effects heavy patch and you want to add one of these polyphonic effects to it, uh, you really can't without taking a whole bunch of stuff out. So you really, if you want to use these effects, you really have to think about signal flow mm -hmm. and DSP management and that kind of thing. So again, consider one pitch effect takes half of one of the DSP chips or a quarter of all the DSP. There's two chips in the Helix. So it takes one half of one of those chips. So this patch, which you can download for free, uh, this patch is pretty fully featured and uses these new pitch effects. Yeah. Just one. You can't have two of them in there. There's not enough. I don't know why you uh, it, So you see, you can see there's a, a compressor, two drives, an amp, and the pitch effect in one row, which is one of the chips. And then you've got all the, the delays and reverbs and stuff and then IR in the bottom. And that's pretty much maxed pretty out. Involved. You can't add much to this. Uh, so you can make presets that have, or patches that have, a pretty full feature set with the poly effects. But like, if, you, if you're if you an effects heavy user and you're, you're getting close to maxing out DSP in patches already, these are going to really put the hurt on what you can do. So that's that to me, that's the biggest drawback, Yeah, is the DSP usage. Yeah, but it is what it is. I mean, it's like... The polyphonic stuff takes a lot of processing power. Yeah, it's processing each string individually. Mm -hmm. It's nuts. 
Yeah. Um, another drawback for me is uh, a lot of people asked or maybe assume that this has like a pog built into it, and it doesn't. Because one of the um, characteristics of the pog, and we talked about this earlier, one, some of the pogs let you do four different, generate four yeah. different pitches. Yeah. But most of them, all of them do two, right? At least. So all the yeah, so I'll say that. So all the pogs, there's multiple different versions of pog, and Brad, you know more about it because you've owned pretty much all of them. Yeah. Uh, nano, they, nano, micro, pog, pog two. They all generate at least two. Mm-hmm. Up, uh, at least all of them do at least up and down. Yeah. So one down. One a up. very, a very typical. What we like to do is do an up octave and a down octave, and then you can. The up octave has a little higher level than the down octave yeah. often, or it depends on what you want to do. You can't do that with the poly pitch effects. You can only go one way. Just clarifying same with that. I don't think everybody wants necessarily to be able to have five layers of notes. You're not going to play an organ out of one note. Yeah. And like that that's something that I think is cool about the pog, but like I never use that. Like yeah. I can like I can't. Like John Mayer did in Continuum or uh, on In Repair on Continuum. And that's actually what I found about the pog. Yeah. Super cool. I have no reason to use that. And so people say pog and you know for if you don't I just don't think everybody knows what they're asking like, well this can do what I th- think you probably really only need it to do yeah uh the way we want to do stuff but actually it does more stuff it does all this crazy extra go nuts i thing. don't believe a pog can do the ramp thing it cannot i don't know of anything that can do the ramp thing. surely no. something can yeah but know. now the helix can now the helix so um so yeah that would be another drawback for me is you only get one pitch uh typically for a lot of these effects and that's pretty much it and honestly the the extra you know generator thing is kind of a I don't like you said. I, it's kind of a specialty thing. Yeah, I think for most people, this is going to do exactly what they want to do. And I know a lot of you just reading the reactions from uh, 3.0, like on Facebook and stuff in these groups, is that you're overwhelmingly loving it, and we are too. Yeah. So these pitch effects are really cool. Um, again, just know that you are going to have to rearrange your signal chain if you have a lot of effects heavy patches. Or you can just get just this patch. This one. Yeah. And we did it for you. That's right. Thanks so much for hanging out with us uh, I'm for this longer form video. It hurts my brain. We've become better friends in this video. You, okay. you two. Yeah, I think we. if you made it to the end, congratulations. we have we have a free gift for you. We already told you about it, but you get this patch for Go free. Go get the patch. But yes. if you made it this far. What do you want people to write in the comments if they made it this far, Bradford? You oh. tell them. You tell them. Let's, let's go with the old favorite. What's Rabbit tortoise monkey hair. <laughs> Put it in there. Thank you so much Use for watching. Use emojis. Confuse the junk out of people. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video. If you not already. Hey, get firmware 3.0 that if you too. haven't. I keep seeing people post like in in like the Helix uh, groups in Facebook. Like, I'm still running 2.7. Like, what are you doing? Go get... Line 6 is giving you all these goodies for free. Go grab them. We should actually put this in the beginning of the video. 3.0 is stable. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, had no line, six, line 6 does a very good job mm-hmm. of not releasing something until it's good to go. I've seen a few people asking, like, yeah. hey, is it stable enough to yeah. grab? And totally understand the concern. This isn't the Kemper, okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> He's right, though. But yeah. There's no Kemper beta. Yes. <laughs> but but it's stable, so grab yeah. it. Grab it. All right. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.